The scale of this security breach was really unprecedented. Admiral Mike Mullen said over the weekend that the United States has never been this close to nuclear war. Do you agree with him? Yeah, I do. There are nuclear weapons in Europe. They're not being kept safely. They're in Italy and they're in Germany and Netherlands and Belgium. The only tool that it really took to discover this was a Google search. I came across these flashcard websites. The users had foolishly uploaded incredibly sensitive stuff to it without checking the privacy settings. The more I delved into, the more and more flashcards popped up with information that seemed very, very secretive to me. There's like one thread and you pull at it and then the whole tapestry kind of unravels. One of the results that I came across was a Facebook page by a US uh, service member who had posted a picture of his entire squadron. Showed some people next to a bomb and you know, the, the mind races, doesn't it? <laughs> who are these people? What is the bomb? Is it live? My immediate reaction was, oh shit, this is something big. I'm Fuka Posma, and I'm an investigator for Bellingcat. Hello, my name is Maxim Edwards, and I'm an editor at Bellingcat. This morning, as the Ukrainian capitals attacked again, NATO kicks off nuclear training exercises in Europe. One of the topics here in the Netherlands is the American nuclear weapons that are stationed here. The presence of U.S. nuclear weapons throughout Europe is a public secret, but everybody sort of knows that they are here. Um, and that really annoys me. They don't confirm or deny the location of nuclear weapons at specific places. They said numerous times, the Cold War is over. This idea simply is not true. The nuclear weapons that exist today are immensely more powerful than those that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And that makes it only more important that we know what's at stake. And that's why I wanted to investigate this. One thing you do as an investigator is to learn the language of the subject you're investigating. And so my very first step was to go into a Wikipedia article uh, about the military airbase here in the Netherlands where these nuclear weapons are stored and learn certain terminology. When I had this list of terms that I knew these people were using, I simply went to Google and combined them with Volkol, the name of the Dutch airbase. And almost immediately I came across these flashcard websites. Soldiers have to learn a lot in order to, you know, effectively do your job, meaning that they will also look for ways that help them study. So imagine you are using a physical flashcard, right? You write a question on one side, write the answer on the other one. Most of these apps also sync to websites because they want other people to find the, your study material. They were online in the public domain because they had been uploaded to these flashcard apps, which in their default settings make your flashcards public. So that's why they're so simple but so durable, because anyone can use them as a kind of memory aid. But very quickly it delved into very specific knowledge that wasn't meant to be public. One of the terms was PAS, Protective Aircraft Shelter, which protects the aircraft that carry the nuclear weapons. Below those shelters are vaults, WS3, Weapons Security Storage Systems. This is the system that actually contains the nuclear weapon itself. And the users had foolishly uploaded incredibly sensitive stuff to it without checking the privacy settings. One of the first most interesting cards that I saw was the question, how many volts are there at Volkl? And the answer was 11. Now this is not meant to be public knowledge. In the process of searching for stuff, he came across more and more and more and more of them. Now one of these sets, for example, could contain up to 70 flashcards, all of them containing questions that were answered with sensitive information. What happens when an alarm goes off? How many people show up? What kind of weapons do they carry? I couldn't really at first believe what I was reading, but I mean, it was in black and white. And it was, in, it was completely public. You could exactly figure out how many inches can you move the barbed wire before an alarm goes off. One of the most intriguing things I found was the words that the security guards can use if they are under duress. Um, and in this case, it was banana pancake. It was really a, an enormous breach of security that anyone who wants to uh, do harm or get onto that base 
could really make a use of. So not only were US service members leaking this kind of data from Volkel in the Netherlands, they were also doing this from military bases in Belgium, in Germany, in Italy, and in Turkey as well. So much stuff is, is hiding in plain sight. The only tool that it really took to discover this was a Google search. Coming across these cards that contain information really showed me that there was something here going on uh, that I had to investigate further. So we had the flashcard data sets, but we need to verify the information. A lot of these flashcard sets were made by usernames, by profiles. And sometimes a soldier was using his real name. He found that the names were those that belonged to um, serving members of US personnel. In some cases, he was able to identify the division that they served in. One of the results that I came across was a Facebook page by a US uh, service member who had posted a picture of his entire squadron. That, that, was, that was probably one of the most stunning things that we discovered in this investigation. It showed some people next to a bomb and, you know, the, the mind races, doesn't it? <laughs> who are these people? What is the bomb? Is it live? What I found chilling was it was, it was these individuals that were standing next to a bomb and, you know, one of them probably uploaded one of some of these flashcards. It was shared on an American Facebook. You only saw uh, American uniforms. At first I had no reason to doubt that this was just in the United States. But then I saw a very tiny flag on a car that was standing on the left side of this picture. And it was the flag of the Netherlands. And then I thought, well, this is, this is very interesting. There's like one thread and you pull at it and then the whole tapestry kind of unravels and then all of a sudden this is like cascade of you know new new relevant pieces of information that's just coming at you and that is where geolocation comes in it proves that something was recorded at a certain location and that is where the data becomes undeniable there's only one military airbase in the netherlands which has u.s uh, nuclear weapons stored uh, so i immediately went to Volkel. Uh, through another leaked map online that you could find through Google, we could see that the aircraft shelter that they're standing in front of, where they took the group picture, was Hangar 532. That is a number that also appeared in our flashcard sets that we found. You could see a runway in the background, and there are some trees and a smaller concrete structure close by. And finally, there's this yellow line that goes across the floor on which these, this squadron is standing. Now all of these elements can be used to pinpoint the exact hangar that they're standing in front of. Basically using Google and Facebook, we've uncovered all of this secretive information and we managed to connect it to each other. When we can find the data, that means anyone can basically find this data. So I'm pretty sure that this data might have already ended up in uh, adversaries' hands. Eventually, you'll have to inform uh, the authorities because it is a breach of security. There are certain risks involved, um, but we're also journalists. So we decided to reach out to each of those defense ministries. So the Dutch Ministry of Defense replied saying that they saw the Facebook picture and they also confirmed that it wasn't supposed to be taken, let alone published. The US military basically reiterated that they wouldn't confirm or deny the presence of nuclear weapons. They didn't tell us not to publish. Clearly, it wasn't a good look for them. When we published the article, um, it really went worldwide. The reaction was overwhelming, overwhelmingly supportive in a lot of ways. The Pentagon replied as well, saying in a press conference that they would uh, look into this issue of using flashcard apps and the data that was leaked through them. The Department of the Air Force is investigating the suitability of information shared via study flashcards. And I think, as you also know, it's U.S. policy not to neither confirm or deny the presence or absence of nuclear weapons at any specific location. But I'm sure there's information out there on nuclear secrets that we don't know about. Currently, we do live in times where the risk of nuclear war is elevated, and that makes it only more important that we know what's at stake. And that is why this investigation and laying it bare matters.